Hello guys, welcome back and today we're going to be talking about the NHL Draft Lottery and where some of the biggest stars in the NHL right now that were selected high up in the first round would be if the Draft Lottery really wasn't a thing. Now from 1995 all the way to 2012, a team couldn't move up more than 5 spots. So that basically means that the highest a team that could get the first overall pick was the 5th team. You can see it a couple of times in what I'm about to show you, but it wasn't. you couldn't jump that big if you're going to get the first overall pick. You had to be at least with the 5th pick to jump that high. So just setting some ground rules for the NHL there, but they didn't allow that big of a jump. Unlike now where you can be the Hurricanes and be the 13th or the 11th pick and all the way to 2nd or 1st overall it just wasn't that way back then even six years ago i'm not going to mention every draft year since some of them didn't really change at all but we're going to start with 2004 but in the 2004 season the bond three was pittsburgh washington and chicago in that order but of course the lottery was favoring washington as washington won that first overall pick second being pittsburgh and with that third overall pick it was chicago so we know Vechkin, malkin and cam barker third overall for the chicago blackhawks i haven't even heard of that name before i for today so yeah it was a bust obviously chicago Blackhawks not doing too well on that front and obviously not doing too well on that pick but of course they'd get into Kane and Taves after that so I'm not feeling too bad for them. So again looking at this 2004 draft it wasn't the thing Washington probably would have picked Malkin at number two and then Pittsburgh would have had Ovechkin they would have had Crosby if they had both on our team that would be ridiculous but the two great Russians there but imagine if Pittsburgh won that lottery kept it and then kept it with Crosby it'd be Ovechkin Crosby it would be even more of a dynasty than we're seeing today it would be craziness but number three of course it stuck with Chicago then we'll skip ahead a little bit to the 2007 draft where the bottom three was Philadelphia Arizona and LA then it ended up being Chicago Philadelphia Arizona I think Chicago was like four for fifth in the standings so they were still available to do that they just jumped a lot then the order ended up going Kane which of course ended up being a franchise player for them JVR to Philadelphia and Kyle Turris to Arizona now, of course, if that draft lottery did not happen, Philadelphia would be here with Kane, and I think that they'd take that for sure. I think Then Arizona would have JVR, that's a good player for them, and LA would have Tourists. That would be an interesting situation with their centered position, but it would still be a different different makeup. Again, all of these things changed, and it could have been a way different thing if the, if the draft lottery stuck. It could have been a different league even. Just think about it, if, if Chicago didn't win that draft lottery, didn't get Kane, they probably would have won three cups, that's for sure. Maybe not even two, maybe not even one. I mean, Kane is that influential for Chicago's success. I mean, if they didn't get that first overall pick, Chicago might not have even won anything in this decade. Now, throughout this, we're going to jump up to the 2013 season, the 2013 draft, but in 2008, 2009, 2010, and 2011, the top three picks all stayed the same, so nothing to really report there. In 2012, it was probably one of the worst drafts ever, so again, not really too much to, not really too much to talk about there, since Neil Yakupov isn't really a star. In the 2013 season, the standings went as follows. You had Florida, Colorado, and Tampa Bay. Now, it switched up a little bit as Colorado ended up getting the first pick. They picked, of course, McKinnon with that pick. Then it went Barkov for Florida, and Drew, of course, stayed with Tampa Bay for that third pick. So, too, not too much switching, but let's say Florida got that first overall pick. I think they'd be pretty happy with McKinnon, even though, in my opinion, McKinnon is an elite player. Barkov isn't too far behind, so it isn't a monumental shift, but I think Florida would rather have McKinnon right now than Barkov, even though that's no slouch against Barkov. Barkov's an amazing player. It's just McKinnon is that much better. Then we look at the 2014 draft where Buffalo came in first, Florida second, Edmonton third. That was the standings going into it. Then the uh, slot, then the lottery happened. Florida jumped up to number one, Buffalo number two, and Edmonton number three. But the draft went as follows. You had Florida picking Eppblad at number one. Second, you have Buffalo picking Reinhardt. And third, Dreisaitl to Edmonton. I still think that Buffalo would have rather had Dreisaitl looking back on it. Reinhardt had a good, better second half, but still not Dreisaitl numbers. I think that it was a big mistake there. But uh, Buffalo could have gotten that first overall, just have Ekblad, and that would have been fine. Ekblad's still a great player there. But Florida probably would have picked Reinhardt. It depends, though. But if that went that way, 
I think obviously they would rather have dry saddled, but it was switched a little bit, kind of like with the McKinnon, McKinnon and Barkov situation. It was just switched up a little bit more than that, but it wasn't that big of a gap from players. And then you have the famous 2015 NHL draft lottery where the Buffalo Sabres were trying to get number one. They were last in the league by a long shot. Then you had Arizona at number two and Edmonton at number three. Then it went, of course, Edmonton at number one. Then you had Buffalo at number two. And then you had Arizona at number three. And obviously, it was a huge deal for that. Buffalo missing out from McDavid as McDavid goes to Edmonton, Eichel goes to Buffalo, and Dylan Strom goes to Arizona. Again, not too much change, but only a flip-flop the first and second positions, but it was a massive one as McDavid is an amazing player. He's a franchise player, maybe even the best player in the league, while Eichel is still great, but of course not that great, even though he is fantastic still, but Buffalo missed out on a franchise player. Eichel still might be that, but not quite as good as McDavid, and that was a huge shift, and it was a huge mark for both Edmonton and Buffalo, as one had lots of luck and the other did not, but Buffalo having to miss out from that after taking seriously hard was obviously very bad for them, and they didn't really, they didn't really come back from that, as Buffalo, Eichel didn't help them as much as Edmonton with McDavid. And you have in 2016 where the top three shifted a little bit more. Toronto at number one, you had Edmonton number two, and Vancouver number three. But Toronto stayed with that first overall pick. Thank you, thankful for Toronto fans there. But then you have Winnipeg at number two and Columbus at number three. And of course, that shifted a lot of things as Matthews goes number one, and Line A number two, and Dubois number three. And of course, if you kept that, you would have had Line A as an Edmonton Oiler. You would have had Dubois as a Vancouver Canuck. That fixes a lot of problems with Vancouver and fixes a lot of problems with Edmonton right now. I think both of those guys, even though they have had, Edmonton has had the draft lock, Vancouver has not. Both of those teams could desperately use what they were missing out on. The last year I'm going to mention is 2018, where we had Buffalo, Ottawa, and Arizona. That was the slate. Then, of course, Buffalo number one, Carolina jumping 11 to 2, and Montreal like having number three and we don't know who's going to be picked and who will not produce and who will not get up to the NHL level and play good there but we've known now that there's people that that was teams that jumped and teams that dropped down of course that's huge for a lot of these teams like Montreal and Carolina and of course bad for teams like Ottawa and Arizona but even though you might not think about it too much Ovechkin would have been paying without the lottery Nelkin would have been in Washington Capital without the lottery Kane would be a flyer without the lottery then you have JVR as a coyote tourist as a king you'd have McKinnon as a Panther, you'd have Reinhardt as a Panther, you'd have Barkov as an Avalanche, you'd have Ekblad as a, Ekblad as a Sabre, you'd have McDavid as a Sabre, you'd have Eichel as a Coyote, you'd have Strom as an Oiler, you'd have Line as an Oiler, you'd have Dubois as a Vancouver Canuck, and a lot of these things shifted, and you may not, you may underestimate it, but a lot of the starts to date were affected by the draft lottery. A lot of them could have been on different teams if it had not even been a thing, like the MLB or the NFL. I think we doubt sometimes how much the NHL draft lottery changes the league. I mean, again, I just mentioned all these players that shifted, but if Ovechkin would have been a Penguin, who knows what would have happened? I mean, there's a lot of things that could have shifted. Maybe, maybe the Flyers would have been a lot more competitive in 2010 if they had Kane, and that would have been amazing. They, I mean, Blackhawks would have been there, so maybe they would have been somebody else. Maybe the Flyers would have been in the Stanley Cup final of somebody else in the West. I mean, there's a lot of implications, and Philadelphia could have had Kane while Kane was winning the Stanley Cup against them in 2010. There's a lot of implications and a lot of things that I think we take for granted and a lot of changes that could have been made if there was no draft lottery. And you know, there's some years where it didn't really change much, the top three staying the same, but some years it shifted the league, in fact. I mean, Sabre, or McDavid being a Sabre, it would have been completely different. Edmonton probably would have made, wouldn't have made, wouldn't have made the playoffs at all last season, and there was a lot of things that could have happened, a lot of things that would have changed if the draft already wasn't a thing, and I think that sometimes it's great to look back and see how the league would have, ha would have looked like if there was changes, if their draft lottery even just wasn't a thing, if it even didn't exist. But it is weird seeing a world where Ovechkin would be a Penguin and Kane being in Philadelphia. And also Buffalo having three first overall picks of out of the years that I mentioned. They could have had Ekblad, they could have had McDavid, and of course now they're going to have Mc they're going to have Dolan. But just imagine if they had Ekblad, just a little bit better than Reinhardt fixing those defensive problems, and then McDavid, who pretty much fixes everything. I mean, there's some teams that got bit badly, obviously Buffalo, some teams that got that benefited. But guys, sometimes the draft lottery just has not been kind to of them, and we'll look to Buffalo every time we see that.
But that is going it for today, guys. If you guys enjoy it, make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, share with your friends. But tell me down below how you think the league would have been affected if there was no draft lottery. Who you think was affected the most. Which team was affected the most. And I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.